talking to myself again But it's the only way you're ever gonna learn You look back and it's all in the past I'm dwelling on the thoughts I cannot say to you Good afternoon, welcome back to Wembley Stadium as we enter the quarter-final stage from Group A and that is featuring Newcastle United. The lineup now complete for the quarter-finals from Group A. Tranmere Rangers, who defeated Wimbledon against Newcastle United, Conquerors of Liverpool. Nottingham Forest, who beat Leeds United by three goals to nil, will play Aston Villa, who have just beaten Blackburn Rovers on a penalty shootout. Alan Evans and Alan McInerney scoring for Aston Villa. Steve Archibald for Blackburn Rovers, but Colin Henry has just very weakly put his kick over the crossbar. And that means Aston Villa on the sudden death rule are through. Looking towards the uh, players' tunnel, I can see Glen Roder about to lead the Newcastle United side out. United were at full strength apart from the two Jacksons, Darren and Peter, for the first round match when they beat Liverpool by that goal to nil. Neil McDonald, very confident indeed, scoring the penalty that settled it. United's hero, undoubtedly, Gary Kelly. They now play Tranmere Rovers, and you'll hear a big roar. Wembley by no means full, but still a warm welcome and a warm reception for Glenn Roder as he leads his side out. Following him, Brian Tinian, Mirat Dinia, Paul Goddard, Paul Stevenson, who's starting this game, Paul Gascoigne, Kenny Wharton, Neil McDonald, Gary Kelly and Michael O'Neill, so it looks as if David McCreary, who had such a good game, is not going to start in this one. Again, there is no team news on the scoreboard, but uh, I think I can tell you the uh, Tranmere Rovers team, they'll have Eric Nixon in goal, he's on loan from Manchester City, Dave Higgins at right back, Mark McCarrick at number three, Dave Martindale at four, Ronnie Moore, a veteran and uh, a great goal scorer with Tranmere in his first spell with the club, now operating at the centre of defence. Steve Vickers partners him wearing six. John Morrissey wears seven. He's the son of uh, Johnny Morrissey, the former Everton player, who was here with them in the 1966 Cup final. Jim Harvey is the captain. He wears eight at nine. Jim Steele, a £65,000 signing from Wrexham. Ian Muir is their leading goal scorer at ten. And Steve Mungal, the longest serving player, will wear 11. Their manager, incidentally, is uh, Johnny King, who's also been to Wembley with Northwich Victoria in the FA Vars. Among the Newcastle substitutes, John Cornwall, Tommy Wright, Andy Thomas, who is back after a long spell of injury, John Bailey, and Kevin Scott. So David McCreary obviously picked up some injury in the victory over Liverpool. And they had a nasty injury, in fact, to John Barnes, a groin strain. So let's hope that's not going to keep him out of the European Championships in the summer. So very shortly, this first quarter-final will be underway as William McFall and John Pickering and Derek Wright, the physio, take their places on the bench on the far side from our commentary position. We're overlooking Wembley with the players tunnel those of you familiar with the ground to our right and the Newcastle supporters packed into that particular area some sections of Wembley looking very very empty indeed we've been told that clubs like Nottingham Forest have sold just uh, a handful of tickets for this festival well Newcastle and Sunderland have responded better than most with round about 25 uh, 2500 from uh, each club so it looks as if United will line up with Gary Kelly in goal, Neil McDonald at right back at the centre of the defence, John Anderson and Glenn Rhoda, Brian Tinian at left back. In midfield, it'll be Kenny Wharton and Paul Gascoigne. With Paul Stevenson coming into the side uh, up front, Goddard, Mirandina and Michael O'Neill. And United will play away from the tunnel end it looks in the first half 20 minutes each way in the quarter-final as in the first round and they did play very very well against Liverpool they contained them well and in the second period had their chances in fact to win within the 40 minutes Michael O'Neill missing a header from a great cross from Neil McDonald and then Paul Goddard clipping one over the bar with Hooper 
beaten as this match about to get underway the referee blows his whistle calls the players together and United looking for a place in the semi-finals and if they reach that they'll be playing tomorrow morning and the festival will go on for the North East Sunderland of course to play Wigan this afternoon that's a 4.40 kick-off we've already played Wigan twice this season Newcastle have never played Tranmere Rovers Tranmere Rovers have never been to Wembley so this is a great experience for them and they've brought a lot of fans and they're making their presence felt on the far side of the stadium it's going to be Tranmere to kick off Ian Muir and Jim Steele getting this first quarter final underway pumped forward by Steve Mungal a Scot, the longest serving player on their books he pumps that into the area and Gary Kelly comes out and claims that quite comfortably and United having geared themselves up to beat Liverpool will be be careful not to be complacent playing a fourth division side Tranmere Rovers at the start of play were the 400 to 1 outsiders but they did beat Wimbledon who of course have beaten Newcastle on a couple of occasions this season John Anderson midway inside his own half finds Kenny Wharton Wharton flicks that one nicely inside for Michael O'Neill now to Goddard midway inside the Tranmere half of the field he picks up Neil McDonald on the right but that's a good challenge and Stevenson goes in and regains possession for Newcastle to McDonald to Mirandinho in the box and Mirandinho is over the bar but that was a good opportunity for United and good work by Neil McDonald Mirandinho not finishing as well as he would have liked but the first positive chance in just a minute and ten seconds of this quarter-final falls to United and Mirandinho over the crossbar Eric Nixon to take the goal kick formerly of course with Manchester City and he's on loan from them to Tranmere headed on by Muir towards John Morrissey Mungar making a run on the left O'Neill in with a challenge O'Neill dropping back into midfield as Rhoda cuts out the danger from that move but Mungar plays it inside and across comes Kenny Wharton well to deny Ian Muir the leading goal scorer and one man who will certainly be one of the penalty takers Gascoigne midway inside his own half to Rhoda who has some space Rhoda of course has played here the Queen's Park Rangers in the FA Cup final finds O'Neill he finds Tinian who's made a run down the left and cuts inside just outside the area Tinian and Goddard good work from him squares it for Mirandinia Mirandinia's 1-2 with Goddard doesn't come off and out comes Eric Nixon to claim that and bowls it out to Mungal who's dropped back forward for John Morrissey in the outside right position just inside the Newcastle half of the field Gascoigne and O'Neill closing him down but it breaks for Tranmere Dave Martindale their goal scorer against Wimbledon but Anderson is across to deny him Anderson just outside his own area finds Gascoigne Gascoigne midway inside his own half now into the centre circle Paul Gascoigne to Mirandinia Mirandinia tries to play 1-2 with Gascoigne it comes off thanks to the resilience of Gascoigne now Mirandinia going on a run getting inside the area to Goddard and just taken off his toes by Dave Higgins and back to goalkeeper Eric Nixon but a bright start by Newcastle with Mirandinia very much in the thick of things also Paul Gascoigne showing that he wants to get involved the rain has stopped here at Wembley and it's now pleasant early afternoon as Tranmere come forward and this looks dangerous Ronnie Moore and Tinian has to concede the corner kick as Kenny come out and Ronnie Moore formerly a striker now a player coach and operating as a centre half coming back to Tranmere Rovers after a spell at Rotherham United wins the first corner that Jim Harvey the captain a £20,000 signing from Hereford will take and United have everyone back bar Goddard and Mirandinia in that 18 yard area Tinian heading it away not comprehensively though but McDonald manages to beat Harvey to that ball feeds Goddard Goddard holds it well plays it back towards Tinian Tinian now in a little bit of space able to run down the left and play it inside to Michael O'Neill O'Neill Square finds Wharton who's made room 
Rhoda is also there in support. Anne MacDonald and John Anderson. And this is Anderson taking up the play inside the centre circle to Michael O'Neill. Back to goal and a good turn by O'Neill trying to get past Ronnie Moore and then fouling him and conceding the free kick to Tranmere Rovers some 10 yards inside their own half 15 minutes to go in this first period and it's Newcastle United nil, Tranmere Rovers nil as Kenny Wharton to Michael O'Neill Tinian square to Glen Roder and right across the field to Neil MacDonald this is Paul Stevenson the one change as he loses possession and Tramia come forward and Stevenson a judge to have committed the foul so it's going to be a free kick some 30 yards out to Tramia Rovers who've got a record for producing some very good players among them Steve Koppel and Roy McFarland and going back further the great Dixie Dean a free kick taken and Tinian, under pressure from Steve Vickers, turns that behind for the second corner of the game to Tranmere Rovers. But United having carved out their best early chances. Mirandini ballooning one over from ten yards out. Jim Harvey, the captain again, to take this corner kick from the outside right position. Neil McDonald at the near post. The far post, Paul Stevenson. Michael O'Neill back there as well. Gary Kelly coming under pressure, drops it, and they're in the lead, Tramir Rovers. And I think it's the fullback, Mark McCarrick, who puts them ahead. And United trail to the fourth division side. Well, that's typical. Gary Kelly, who didn't put a foot wrong in the match against Liverpool, drops across. And Tramir Rovers. Lead Newcastle. In fact, John Morrissey getting the credit for that. McCarrick was at the far post. Morrissey there as well. And it was Morrissey who took advantage of Gary Kelly letting that one slip away from him. And Tramia Rovers of the fourth division lead Newcastle by a goal to nil. 13 minutes left in this first period. Anderson cuts that out as the Tramia fans chant 1 nil. Tinian, who gave away the corner that led to the goal. Back to Anderson. McDonald making a run down the right. And that looks to be a well-weighted pass. In fact, it's a brilliant pass from Anderson. All of 40 yards. And McDonald should have actually done better. Because he couldn't control it. And McCarrick is the cross there to deny him. And now McCarrick coming away. It gives that away to Stevenson, to Mirandinia. Mirandinia turns. Can't get past his man. Stevenson again to McDonald. McDonald with a chance to get the cross in. And they're lining up. And that was a bad cross from Neil McDonald. And United... Not looking anything like as good as they did against Liverpool. And this, so typical of them, but a long way to go. 32 and a half minutes left in this game, but they're trading by a goal to nil. John Morrissey, the goal scorer at Wembley. His father played here 22 years ago. Up goes Glen Roder and wins that high ball, but it's back with Tranmere again. Ian Muir. An overhead kick finds Morrissey, the goal scorer. He cuts inside on O'Neill, but is robbed by Tinian, who finds Gascoigne. Gascoigne now a chance for him to show his skills, which he does, and plays that nicely to the path of Paul Stevenson. And Stevenson feeding Mirandini wide on the right. Goddard arriving in the middle. Tinian is up there. O'Neill is arriving too. But that's another bad ball from Mirandini, giving it away. Tramia come away with it. It's played long for Morrissey to chase. Anderson is across there covering with the ball out of play for a throw into United. Quickly taken to Glen Roder. Roder into the centre circle for Gascoigne. Gascoigne to Mirandinia. Mirandinia finds Goddard. Anderson. And a lovely touch by O'Neill back to Mirandinia. And Mirandinia again, the poor ball to Michael O'Neill. And the ball out of play for a throw in. Some. 10 yards from the Tramia Rovers line be taken by Mungal wearing number 11 towards Jim Steele but that bounces kindly for Kenny Wharton who leaves it for Gascoigne Gascoigne just outside the box as McDonald makes a run McDonald 25 yards out 
in a shooting position. Road has gone wide of him. McDonald chips it into Goddard, and Goddard's header flashes just wide. Ten minutes left of this first period, and Newcastle are trailing by a goal to nil. Tranmere scorer John Morrissey, their goalkeeper Eric Nixon, to take the free kick. That header wouldn't have counted as Goddard, a judge to have been a fraction offside. So Eric Nixon to take this free kick. And William McFall will be disappointed with the way it's going so far. Up towards Rhoda, who lets that run, and Tinian able to get it back to Gary Kelly instead, turns and finds Michael O'Neill, who just gives it straight to Jim Steele. And now a chance for Tramir to increase their lead, which they very nearly do, but Gary Kelly goes down and makes a good save on the edge of his six-yard box to deny Ian Muir. Bowls it out towards Kenny Wharton. Wharton in the centre circle. Mirandino to his right. O'Neill to his left. This is O'Neill. Cuts inside. Finds Mirandino again. Again, Neil McDonald has made that run down the right. And Mirandino picks him out with a perfectly weighted pass. But McDonald leaving it for Rhoda. Now Rhoda can close right down and get to the edge of the box. And she does. And he gets a shot in. And Eric Nixon is across quickly to make the save. Not often you see Rhoda trying a shot from that range but he did and Nixon was up to it so Nixon to make the clearance as Wembley begins to not fill up but look a little more crowded perhaps now some 20,000 fans in here but still I would have thought a disappointing attendance as the ball is with Morrissey Morrissey taking on Tinian getting his cross in Anderson a partial head away Wharton coming back to lend support and it's O'Neill in the end who finds Gascoigne Gascoigne looking for support runs into trouble O'Neill takes over to Goddard Goddard's, Goddard's clattered into and Tramwell come back again with Jim Steele on the far side Steele's cross in Rader cuts it out and the free kick given to Newcastle United on the edge of the area Rader to Wharton as the sun comes out it's now a very pleasant afternoon Gascoigne gives it away and Tranmere back with Morrissey to Ian Muir Muir forward for Steele now to Morrissey who gets past O'Neill ball still in play as Martindale into that area he gets into a shooting position and Gary Kelly makes a fine save and they shouldn't have given him that shooting opportunity Gary Kelly flinging himself to his left to just palm that round who says the giant scoreboard as we have seven and a half minutes left in this first period, Tranmere Rovers won, Newcastle United nil. John Morrissey, the goal scorer, from a corner kick. And this is another corner kick to be taken by Harvey. And Morrissey has taken up that position again. And Gary Kelly will be looking to make sure his handling is a bit better this time as Tinian heads it behind for another corner kick. And Jim Harvey, the captain, to take it. Former... Hereford United player as that's again for Gary Kelly and this time Kelly claims it well bowls it out to Gascoigne as McDonald makes a run he's switched flanks McDonald and finds Mirandinia Mirandinia picking out Goddard if Goddard can keep this in play there could be something on but it skids off the turf but the right idea from Mirandinia it looked good when the pass set off but it just gained momentum as it hit the slippery surface here at Wembley and skidded out of play as the goal kick taken short by Eric Nixon up to Harvey to Dave Higgins nice flick on by Steele to Mongol Mongol midway inside the Newcastle half of the field and Tranmere playing very well indeed really rising to the occasion this is Jim Harvey in a tussle, tussle with Kenny Wharton in the end finds Morrissey in an orthodox outside right position he's taking on Brian Tinney and leaving it for Dave Martindale Martindale cuts inside, Gascoigne in front of him played forward for Steele and Rhoda and Tinney and guilty of ball watching as it breaks for Morrissey, Morrissey getting past Tinney and getting the cross into the far post they're queuing up and that was only inches wide and Gary Kelly annoyed and really it is Tranmere Rovers creating much the better chances and they lead by a goal to nil Gascoigne, this surely his stage, but hasn't really 
done anything too spectacular just yet. But finds Mirandinha. Mirandinha trying to shake off Higgins. He does so well. And finds Stevenson on the right. Stevenson with McCarrick between him and goal. And Stevenson trying to win the corner kick. Not yet. And loses out in the end to McCarrick. Battles back there, Paul Stevenson. And in the end concedes the free kick. And time ticking away in this first period. 25 minutes of the match left. Tranmere Rovers 1, Newcastle United 0. And the goal separating the two sides scored by John Morrissey, direct from or after a mistake from Gary Kelly who'd failed to hold a Jim Harvey corner. Eric Nixon gets the ball back from Mark McCarrick. Bowls that one out to McCarrick again. And Tranmere will be delighted with their lead as Wharton battles for it in midfield with Anderson and Anderson comes through with the ball to Goddard Goddard tries to play a 1-2 back into the path of John Anderson it's cut out well though by Ronnie Moore Ronnie Moore familiar with his long flowing blonde locks and United concede another free kick just three yards inside the Tranmere half of the field Tranmere in no hurry take this Harvey Martindale is clattered by Wharton and that's a free kick but Dave Higgins the right back will take he's got Ian Muir and Jim Steele both up front Steele taking it on his chest battling with Rhoda in comes Wharton finds Gascoigne Goddard trying to thread that through too many claret and blue shirts it's cut out Steele to Muir and now Mungall into the area and the penalty given Anderson's challenge and a chance for Tramia Rovers to go 2-0 up a chance for Gary Kelly perhaps to make a second penalty save Mungall got into the area upended by John Anderson no protest from Newcastle the referee pointing to the spot and it's going to be Ian Muir, the leading goal scorer against Gary Kelly at Wembley. And this time he scores. He puts it to Kelly's left. And Tranmere Rovers of the fourth division lead Newcastle by two goals to nil with just two minutes 50 left on the clock in this first period. Well, are we going to have a real turn up? Are we going to have a fourth division side through to the semi finals? 15th in the fourth division as well, they are Tranmere Rovers. So great disappointment for Newcastle. But still time for them to put this right. McDonald, Goddard. But little going right for United at the moment. Goddard. Dearly love to get one back before half time. McDonald to Wharton. Ship forward for Mirandinha. Mirandinha giving it away again. Really having a little bit of a nightmare, the Brazilian. And a lot of people here at Wembley will be seeing him for the first time. As Tranmere come forward again, that's a good ball fed out to Jim Steele on the far left. Steele leaving it for McCarrick. Back for Harvey. And Ronnie Moore who pumps that forward. Up goes Tinian. And a speculative shot from Ian Muir safely into the arms of Gary Kelly. Back to Tinian. One minute 45 left. Michael O'Neill to Paul Gascoigne. And if ever United need some of his magic, it's now. But he picks out McDonald with a good ball. And McDonald finds Stevenson. Stevenson and Ronnie Moore in a tangle. And the referee saying the free kick against Paul Stevenson. Moore down on the ground with one minute 18 left on the clock. And he's going to require some treatment. So United 2-0 down. Ronnie Moore the veteran Tranmere central defender now was a striker, was the fourth division's leading goal scorer once and could Tranmere Rovers who've never been to Wembley before find themselves in the semi-final of this competition Newcastle preparing to make a substitution and it's going to be Paul Stevenson I think coming off and John Cornwall coming on Derek Wright and William McFall out on that far side we're into the last minute, but there will be a little bit of time to be added on for that one stoppage in this first half. So United will have 20 minutes in which to...
claw back two goals. Still, the substitution not made as Nixon's long clearance ahead of Rhoda. But Tranmere have it again to Jim Harvey. It's a very authoritative midfield player. Inside to Muir, the leading goal scorer and the man who scored from the penalty spot after Mongol had been brought down. United with a throw in on the far side. The 20 minutes are up and it's now just any time that the referee wants to add on four stoppages. Inside to Gascoigne. Gascoigne midway inside his own half to Glen Roder, to Brian Tinian. As the Tranmere fans whistle for the half-time whistle up to Michael O'Neill who hasn't had a happy second appearance as the whistle goes. It's Tranmere Rover is leading Newcastle by two goals to nil. Back with the second period after this. Back here at Wembley, the second period just underway into the first minute of it, in fact. United had a corner, nothing came of it. And now it's a goal kick to Tranmere Rover. It's taken by Eric Nixon, yet to be beaten in this competition as Wrexham, as uh, Tranmere Rovers have a throw-in on the far side taken towards Muir, the scorer of the penalty. United have made that substitution at half-time. John Cornwall is on for Paul Stevenson. at the only change in the United lineup. 2-0 down, remember. And a very disappointing second-round match after they'd beaten Liverpool in that dramatic penalty shootout. And Tranmere in no hurry to get on with things as they take the throw in midway inside the Newcastle half of the field and come forward again looking very dangerous certainly looking a better side than the bottom half of the fourth division as Gascoigne picks up the loose ball and gives it away and trouble here and it should have been number three and Gascoigne losing possession just outside the area and Rhoda giving him an angry look and that was a bad miss by Ian Muir as Kelly quickly takes the goal kick to John Anderson, now to Rhoda. Rhoda to Neil MacDonald, just inside his own half in the right full-back position. Forward for Gascoigne. Gascoigne facing the wrong way, but finds Cornwall in support. Cornwall with a little bit of support from Neil MacDonald. MacDonald makes the run and gets the cross in, and it's a good one too, and it very nearly fell for Mirandini, but for a good header by Steve Mongol. But Mirandini goes back to retrieve possession and then tries to go through too many Tramier players, but gets it back to Brian Tinian. Tinian squares it for Kenny Wharton. Wharton tries to play a 1-2 with Goddard. That doesn't come off, but John Anderson regains possession for Newcastle. Has McDonald wide to his right, and John Cornwall. This is Cornwall leaving it for McDonald. McDonald with a good cross. Nixon coming for it. Decides against going for it. It falls for Mirandinia from one of those impossible angles, but he gets into a shooting position, Mirandinia. Can he squeeze this one in? He's been closed down. It's back for Wharton. Wharton hammers it in towards goal. A lot of bodies around, and... Tranmere get it away for a throw in by the corner flag which Neil MacDonald will take as Cornwall and Gascoigne close by gets it back from Cornwall and again MacDonald to get the cross in as far as Anderson Anderson just outside the box square for Wharton again Wharton just outside the box chips it forward and to no purpose at all nobody had made the run and the ball safely back with Eric Nixon so a good spell of pressure from United but nothing coming from it and we're almost into the last 15 minutes of this quarter-final with United trailing by two goals to nil. John Morrissey and Ian Muir, the goal scorers, as Tinian regains possession for United and does well to pick out John Cornwall. Cornwall in midfield to Neil MacDonald. MacDonald now well into the Tranmere half, sliding that through to Goddard. Goddard picking it up well. Trying to get to the byline, trying to get a cross in, but again, too many players round him. And Tranmere really lifting their game. Back to Vickers. Vickers, a long clearance downfield. It's easily picked up by Rhoda. Rhoda finds Wharton. Wharton looking for support and picks out Michael O'Neill, who can't control that, and the ball behind for a goal kick. So United starting brightly in this second period, but they need two goals to even put it into a penalty shootout. 2-0 down, Tramia Rovers, their supporters at the other end of the ground to Newcastle, beginning to celebrate already, and the United fans strangely quiet, as well they may be. Nixon's long clearance, and Muir 
are judged offside. It will be a free kick to Newcastle midway inside their own half of the field. They've used one substitution. That's Cornwall on for Stevenson. McCreary not in the starting lineup because of an injury in the victory over Liverpool. This is Gascoigne again unable to find his man. United battling to regain possession. Cornwall goes in. But it's all the way back to John Anderson. Anderson finds Neil McDonald with a little bit of space. McDonald inside towards Kenny Wharton. Inside the Tranmere half now. Forward by McDonald to Wharton. Has Rhoda Square. But chooses to change the play towards Goddard. Goddard quickly bundled off the ball by centre forward Jim Steele who is back. But Anderson robs him up to Mirandinha to Wharton. Wharton chipping into space for O'Neill to run onto that and that was Ronnie Moore just getting it back to goalkeeper Nixon and almost selling him short. Nixon to clear downfield. 13 and a half minutes left on the clock. United 2-0 down still. Having beaten Liverpool this morning by a goal to nil in the penalty shootout. Neil McDonald getting that one. Nixon's clearance. Roder underneath it with Jim Steele. Roder wins the header and leaves it for Wharton to find McDonald. O'Neill and Gascoigne up. And McDonald plays a good one-two with Gascoigne. They have great sliding tackle. And Tramia come away to McCarrick. McCarrick to Martindale. who scored the goal against Wimbledon. He's still going, Martindale. To Muir and the flag up for offside. Which United take quickly. Anderson to Gascoigne. Gascoigne in a little bit of space. McDonald has stayed forward. O'Neill, Goddard and Mirandini are all there. Gascoigne going right through the middle of them and it just doesn't come off again. He pushes the ball forward, hoping O'Neill would have made the run. And the cohesion between the United players, not all it should be. Twelve minutes left. And United need to score twice. Or their interest in the mercantile credit league centenary festival is over but they've done more than most people expected they've seen off Liverpool in the first round as Glenn Roder quickly to Wharton Wharton pretty effective in the United midfield as O'Neill tries an ambitious pass that doesn't come off and it's easily intercepted by Tranmere who get the ball back to their goalkeeper Nixon Nixon up for Steve Vickers the central defender to Steve Mungall inside to Ian Muir Muir just at the edge of the area takes on Tinian Gary Kelly out well and another brave save by the United goalkeeper he's made three or four of those in this game now this is Gascoigne and getting one or two boos poor Gascoigne his reputation comes before him and maybe he's disappointed a lot of people who thought that he would really turn it on as has Michael O'Neill but now a chance for Michael O'Neill to go on a run inside to Wharton Wharton looking for support going himself leaving it now for McDonald McDonald hitting a good ball for Anderson who's moved forward Anderson leaving it for Mirandini Mirandini just outside the box getting it onto his left foot finds Goddard Goddard for Wharton and United just can't carve out any opportunities as McDonald puts one into the middle and I think United have a penalty handball decision from McDonald's cross and United with 10 minutes left on the clock have a chance to pull one back well will Eric Nixon be beaten for the first time in this competition will Neil McDonald score his second penalty if he does United will have 10 minutes in which to get back into it lots of penalties here today Stuart Pearce has had one Neil McDonald this could be his second three strides and it's palmed away by Nixon McDonald has missed it a good save by the goalkeeper and that surely means United are going to be out of it. Oh, what disappointment. If he buried that, then United would have had a chance. But they get the corner. Gascoigne floats it up. Mirandini goes in. And it's headed just over the bar by Ronnie Moore for another corner kick to Newcastle. Michael O'Neill going across to take it. Well, penalties really do seem to get missed an awful lot these days. But all credit to the goalkeeper. He went the right way. He palmed it out. Gascoigne floats that one in up goes Mirandini again it comes back for Wharton Wharton tries one and that's not a bad effort at all but offside 
against United and a Tranmere player took a knock there that ball cannoning into him at 100 miles an hour in a very unpleasant place indeed play will resume with a free kick to Tranmere Rovers but there's going to be a slight hold up in play as the player down on the deck gets some treatment we'll take the opportunity to have a short break still Tranmere Rovers lead Newcastle United by two goals to nil United having missed a penalty to Neil MacDonald now it's Michael O'Neill on the ball seven and a half minutes left plus a little bit of stoppage time John Anderson forward but still in his own half finds Kenny Wharton who's drifted over to the left Wharton coming forward finds Mirandini if Mirandini can control this there could be something on there isn't though because that's a good interception by Steve Vickers and Martin Dale completes the clearance out onto the far side towards Morrissey Morrissey inside to Muir the two goal scorers for Tranmere play back to fullback Mark McCarrick and Tranmere now must be very confident of going through to the semi-finals tomorrow morning Higgins inside little flick on Cornwall though breaking that move down and the black and white shirts come out of defence up towards O'Neill O'Neill a good turn to beat Mungall and over the halfway line and McNeil is away Cornwall wants to stay on side McNeil still going O'Neill still going finds Cornwall Cornwall though beaten by Ronnie Moore and Ronnie Moore trying to get that back to his goalkeeper but Cornwall is across to deny him but Moore gets it back at the second attempt and really very little penetration from Newcastle Gascoigne playing in a deep midfield role Mirandinia not having a happy day as Dave Higgins the player who was injured earlier finds Mark McCarrick McCarrick a long ball forward for Jim Steele across comes Glenn Roder to steer that one back to Gary Kelly Kelly has O'Neill Goddard and Mirandinia the three front men up bowls it out to Cornwall Cornwall to Roder now to Gascoigne now what can Gascoigne do now turns inside to and Martindale too Mirandinia back to Gascoigne 30 yards out Gascoigne looking for an opportunity finds Cornwall Cornwall blasts one uh, it takes a deflection it's a corner kick to United and they desperately need one now 5 minutes 45 left on the clock plus perhaps a minute of stoppage time McDonald with the corner John Cornwall prepared to come short for it Gascoigne at the edge of the area gets it Gascoigne that little turn for Wharton Wharton the shot and surely another corner kick to United as it takes another deflection and United not really able to carve out clear cut chances as O'Neill goes in with a header Goddard tries to keep it in play and does very well to do so but the flag is up the ball out of play from O'Neill's header and it's going to be a goal kick to Tranmere Rovers with five minutes left they lead by two goals to nil disappointment for United who played so well there's now a substitution being made the goal scorer Ian Muir going off and a defender coming on we'll try and identify him for you but that's not so easy here at Wembley today as Nixon takes the goal kick up goes Rhoda the ball with Morrissey Morrissey just outside the area brought down by Kenny Wharton and the free kick given against Newcastle United Wharton protests there's not much point in protesting when you're 2-0 down and just four minutes left United need to score twice and they've had every chance of getting back into it McDonald missing a penalty Harvey with the free kick ten yards outside the Newcastle United area plays that square to the right back to Harvey again Harvey cuts inside O'Neill but Cornwall makes the clearance up to O'Neill again but Ronnie Moore beats him and will take the ball back to his own goalkeeper sees Mirandinia decides against it and changes the play altogether to pick out Dave Higgins three and a half minutes left Tramia have possession they also have a two goal lead as Rhoda tries to regain possession for United it's back with Harvey Harvey for Morrissey in goes Tinian with a sliding tackle but doesn't get possession in the end Anderson has to put the ball out of play for a throw in midway inside the Newcastle half of the field to 
Jim Harvey. Now to Johnny Morrissey. And United have the throw. Level with the edge of their own 18-yard area. Tinian to take it to Gascoigne. Gascoigne brings that down well. Turns, finds Wharton. Wharton into the centre circle. Three minutes left for United to get two goals. A tall order. He picks out Goddard. Goddard taking on Vickers. Trying to get into a shooting position. Paul Goddard hits that one. The flag up again. And Mirandinia had straight offside. And the seconds tick away and the Tranmere fans celebrating the Newcastle supporters not looking too happy about it as Eric Nixon takes the goal kick only as far as Gascoigne Gascoigne bundled off it by Martindale and Mirandinia closing down as Goddard gets into the area two defenders though manage to bundle the ball off him one of them Ronnie Moore finds Dave Martindale two minutes exactly left Vickers to Morrissey and Tranmere yet to concede a goal in this competition a long ball played forward but Rhoda will easily cut that out back to Gary Kelly Kelly bowls it out to Brian Tinian to John Anderson Anderson to Wharton Wharton over the halfway line to Mirandini Mirandini wearing seven but it doesn't seem to suit him as again he finds too many Tramia shirts around him and the ball back with Eric Nixon Nixon the long clearance Jim Steele underneath that heads it on Cornwall though to pick up the loose ball finds Rhoda Rhoda on the edge of his box to Anderson Anderson square for Wharton one minute and ten seconds plus a little bit of stoppage time left Wharton in the Centre circle finds Neil McDonald. Cornwall's made a run. So too is Mirandini. Mirandini stabbing it down for Paul Goddard. And Goddard, who wants a bad ball, aimed for Gascoigne. It was behind Gascoigne. And Tranmere had possession again into the last minute. And that's surely the end of it for Newcastle. But they will be able to remember their victory against Liverpool. Only Nottingham Forest and Everton have managed that this season. So the countdown begins. McDonald getting down his hands and knees to head that into the path of Cornwall but he doesn't get the necessary power and Tranmere come away again but Rhoda breaks that move down midway inside his own half the United skipper up to Mirandinia Mirandinia slips past Dave Higgins the right back and now going on a run finds Goddard back to Mirandinia a great chance he's upended surely that's a penalty it's not given oh and that was a more blatant penalty than the other one and Mirandini looks certain to score after great work from Paul Goddard Mirandini pointing to the penalty spot the referee not prepared to give it as now from the corner McDonald getting the cross in and it's a good looking cross too it comes from Mirandini Mirandini forced to take it wide Tinian and Tinian's chip into the middle is a bad one and the whistle goes it's all over United are out of the mercantile having beaten Liverpool by a goal to nil they lose 2-0 to lowly fourth division side Tranmere Rovers and that is typical of Newcastle United Neil McDonald missing a penalty after Tranmere had gone 2-0 up first John Morrissey ramming the ball home from close range after Gary Kelly had missed a corner taken by Jim Harvey then Ian Muir scoring from the penalty spot after John Anderson I think it was had committed the foul on Jim Steele so Muir and Morrissey, the goal scorers for Tranmere Rovers. They've beaten Wimbledon in a previous round. Now they've beaten another first division club, Newcastle United. The United players salute their supporters who are so delighted with the victory over Liverpool, so dejected with the performance against Tranmere Rovers. So now we look forward to Sunderland carrying the flag for the North East. <laughs>